Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I am so thrilled that you've taken the time out of your busy life to join with me and allow me to make an impartation into your life. I'm going to be sharing some truths from God's Word that I believe have the ability to change your life, particularly if you're believing God for financial breakthroughs in your life. I know everywhere I go, most every church I preach in, that is probably the number one request, the number one need in most of the believers that I come in contact with. They're believing for financial breakthroughs. Well, if you're believing for a financial breakthrough, you've tuned in to the right broadcast because we're going to continue our study on seed time and harvest and calling in your harvest. Now, I want to read from Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22. This is something that you need to understand and get it deep down into your heart. Genesis 8, 22 makes this statement. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Now, we all agree that night is coming, and after that, day is coming. There's not a thing you can do about that. You can't pray, God, I just don't like the night. I don't want any more nights. You can't pray about it. It is a solid fact. It is something that you have to learn to deal with. There's going to be night. There's going to be day. How long? As long as the earth remains. It also says cold and heat. You know, cold's coming, and after that, heat's coming. That's just something you're going to have to learn to accept, and you're going to have to learn to deal with it. I don't care how much you don't like the summertime, it's coming. I don't care how much you might not like wintertime, it's coming. But here's the good thing we need to know. As long as the earth remains, so will seed time and harvest. That simply means if you plant seeds, then it is a solid fact there has got to be a harvest. You see, when God created seeds, and we find this in Genesis chapter 1, when God created seed, the last thing he said to seed was grow. That's all seeds know to do is to grow. That's what they're supposed to do, grow. You know, I've said this on previous broadcasts, but it keeps coming up in my thinking, so I want to repeat it. A few years ago, we were doing one of our church light Christian biker tours, uh, and we do these all over the nation and in other nations as well. This particular time, we were riding across the state of Colorado. And we're riding, you know, and looking at the beauty on both sides of the highway. We're up in the Rocky Mountains, and I'm looking off to the side, and I see these trees growing out of a mountain. Now, you understand how difficult that is? A tree is growing out of the side of a mountain. And as I looked, in fact, I followed it all the way as far as I could, and I'm thinking, how does a tree grow out of a mountain? Well, you know, I don't know how it does it, but I do know this. Seeds don't know any other thing to do than to grow. I assume maybe that, you know, uh, there was a dust storm and enough dust collected on the side of that mountain. And maybe a bird picked up something in another part of the state and it had a seed in it. And he flew up there and landed on that mountain and dropped that seed off and eventually because there was enough soil there, that seed said, okay, I'm supposed to grow, so let's go for it. And the seed began to grow, and a tree wound up in the side of a mountain. That just lets me know how serious seed is about growing. Now, the Bible teaches us that our words are seeds, our thoughts are seeds, our actions are seeds. The Bible even tells us that when we give, when we when we give unto other people, when we give to God. That's also referred to as sowing. The Apostle Paul referred to this in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And he says, whatever man sows, that will he reap. If you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. And if you keep reading that chapter, he was talking about finances. He was talking about sowing finances, and he referred to finances as seed. So that means just like if I plant a watermelon seed, I should expect a watermelon, a watermelon rather, to come up. If I plant orange seeds, I should expect oranges to come up. If I plant tomato seeds, I have every right to expect tomatoes to come up. Well, when I 
plant financial seeds. The Bible says, I have every right to expect a financial harvest. Why? Because as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. So if you plant financial seeds, then start expecting a harvest. You know, I have people tell me, well, Brother Jerry, I've been giving all of my life, but I didn't know I had a right to expect a harvest. Well, according to the Word of God, you do. Now, let me say this. When we give to God, it ought to be out of love. It ought to be out of our, our uh, loyalty to Him, our commitment to Him. I don't just give to get, but God made the rules. He did say, if I give, that I'm entitled to a harvest. I give to God because I love Him. But at the same time, He loves me and He loves you so much that He says, hey, when you do this, I promise you that you'll receive a harvest. Remember, it was Jesus who spoke these words in Luke 6.38. It's Luke 6.38, not Jerry 6.38, Luke 6.38. And it says, give and it shall be given unto you. In other words, you can expect a harvest. Not only that, he said, but he'll cause your harvest to be far greater than your seed. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. In other words, your harvest should be far greater than the seed. But see, that's true whether it be tomatoes or apples or watermelons. You plant that one little seed, that one little tomato seed, and you're going to get a far greater harvest than just one tomato. So understand that you have a right to expect a harvest from every seed that you sow. Now, I want to say this to you. I wrote this in my notes and I wanted to be sure I read it to you because I didn't want to forget it. The key to operating in God's laws and to avoid frustration and the temptation to quit is to understand that with God, there is an appointed time. There is a due season for everything. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one says, to everything there is a season. Now, I understand that. I realize that in the natural, if I plant tomato seed, I'm I'm not going to get upset and frustrated because I don't see tomatoes, you know, springing up by morning. I know there is a season. There is a waiting period. And so I understand that so I don't get frustrated. The farmer doesn't become frustrated because he sowed his seed yesterday and he doesn't see a harvest tomorrow. He understands to everything there is a season. Well, it's the same way with finances. When you sow your finances, don't get frustrated because you don't see a harvest by nightfall. Now, God could do that, and I've had him do it for me numerous times. But if it doesn't happen before dark, I don't give up. I don't get frustrated. I don't quit. I don't go around saying this stuff doesn't work because I know to everything there is a season. So let me read that statement once again. The key to operating God's laws and to avoid frustration and the temptation to quit is to understand that with God, there is an appointed time or a due season for everything. So that means if you sow financial seed, if you were to sow seed into this ministry, if the Lord was to lead you to do that, to help us in the expansion of this ministry, and and many people have, and many people do. If the Lord was to lead you to do that, and you sowed your seed, then God's Word is telling you, don't get impatient, don't give up. In fact, the way it's read in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if, now notice that little word, if we do not faint. In other words, God promises there is a harvest coming. Say that with me. There is a harvest coming. That's what you need to understand, that once you sow your seed, then God promises a harvest is on its way. However, don't give up. Don't quit. Don't faint. Don't grow weary. Wait for it. If you're willing to wait for it, then God promises it will come. In fact, in the book of Habakkuk or Habakkuk, however you want to pronounce it, in chapter 2 and in verse 3, it says, write the vision. 
Now, what is your vision? Once you sow financial seed, what is your vision? A harvest. Write it down. Write down. I sowed seed and I am now expecting a harvest from my seed. Write that down and keep it in front of you. In fact, a lot of times I will do this because the Bible says in Mark chapter 4 that once a seed is sown, it has the potential of producing 30-fold, 60-fold, and even 100-fold. Well, let's just use the word times. 30 times, 60 times, or 100 times. So sometimes I will even write on a sheet of paper just for my benefit. If I sowed a $100 seed, then I write down in my notebook, I am believing for 30, 60, and even a hundred fold. And I'll just multiply the seed I sowed by 30 times, by 60 times, and by a hundred times. And I'll just keep that in front of me. I'm believing for no less than 30 fold. I'm believing for the possibility of a 60 fold. And I'm believing that potentially I have a right to a hundred fold. The Bible says, write that vision, make it plain, so that when you read it, you can run with it, or in other words, it motivates you. It keeps you single-minded. And then it says, for the vision is for an appointed time. What does that mean? It may not come to pass before nightfall, but it will come to pass. Why? Because it has an appointment. It has an appointed time. It says eventually it will speak, and it will not tarry, and it shall come. Praise God. That's God's promise, that you can expect a harvest from every seed that you sow. So I encourage you, you know, I I, I put together a, a little journal years ago. I called it my seed time and harvest journal. And what I would do when I would sow seed, I'd write the date and the amount that I sowed and even where I sowed it. And then in the back part of that little seed time and harvest journal, I recorded when my harvest came. But every time I picked up that journal, I could see the seed that I sowed and I could say, Father, this is my vision. I'm believing for harvest from this seed. I'm keeping it before me. I'm running with it. I'm motivated by it. And I know that there is an appointed time and I am not giving up until that harvest manifests. And I'll tell you, every time it manifests and I write it in that journal, I tell you it brings great joy, praise God. And you know, the beautiful thing is, if God will honor his word for me, he will honor his word for you. You just got to become as serious about it as I am. I'm not playing games with this. My attitude is, if God didn't intend for this to come to pass, he should not have put it in my copy of the book. Because once I read it, then I'm going for it, praise God. And I want you to have that same attitude. So once again, write the vision. If you're believing for a financial harvest, then write down what you're believing God for. That helps you become single-minded. That helps you to stay focused. Whenever the devil says it's not going to happen, no way, you can just pull up your vision where you've written it and say, Satan, uh, apparently you don't know what I know because the Bible said I have a right to expect a harvest. It told me to write down my vision and that it will come to pass at the appointed time. So as far as I'm concerned, it is written. Now you just flee and go sell your lives to somebody else because they're not welcome here. Amen. Praise God. Now, if you're willing to wait for it, look, look, look at me and say, I'm willing to wait for it. You didn't say that with much enthusiasm. I, I could almost hear you right now. You just said, I'm willing to wait for it. No, I want you to be enthusiastic about it. Say it with some enthusiasm. I'm willing to wait for it. Come on, say it one more time. I'm willing to wait for it. If you're willing to wait for it and you refuse to allow weariness to overtake you, then God promises you will have a due season. So say it again with a smile on your face and say it with some joy. I am willing to wait for my harvest. Now, you just go around saying that all day. My harvest is on its way. Due season is coming. Praise God. See, that's how you call in your harvest. You have to be aggressive about it. Paul calls this reaping. You have a right to reap from every seed that you sow. There can be no reaping except there first be sowing. So if you've sown, then what's the next thing you should think? I'm entitled to a harvest. Praise God. 
Galatians chapter 6, once again, verse 7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Don't be deceived about this. If you sow, then you have every right to expect a harvest. If you go around saying, well, I don't really believe I'm going to have a harvest, you just allow the devil to deceive you. If you go around saying, well, it's been three weeks, looks like nothing's happening. You just allowed the devil to deceive you. And what did Paul say? Be not deceived. You see, deception is Satan's greatest weapon. If he can't deceive you, then he can't defeat you. So the way you fight him back is with the word of God. Every time he says it's not going to happen, you quote the word of God. No devil. Bible says in Galatians chapter six, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I've sown and I am going to reap. That settles it in the name of Jesus. The Phillips translation says, a man's harvest in life depends entirely upon that which he sows. Now, you know what that opens up to me? That tells me that my financial future is based on the seeds that I sow. That also tells me that I'm in charge of my financial destiny. I'm in charge of my financial future. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. A man's harvest in life depends entirely upon that which he sows. So that tells me that I'm the one who's in charge of my financial destiny. I'm the one who is in charge of my financial future. Why? Because my harvest depends entirely upon the seeds that I sow. Once again, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. So that's simply telling me that as long as this earth is here, then this principle can be appropriated. Have you got that understanding now? Is that a revelation to you today? That seed time and harvest shall not cease. If you are a seed sower, then you should also be a harvester. God set this into motion and there's nothing that Satan can do to change it. The only thing Satan hopes for is that you will give up before your harvest comes. But if you're determined that quit is not an option, then praise God, you can beat the devil each and every time. Now, let me say this. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 and 12 say this, that God created seed to yield fruit after its own kind. Now, I mentioned that at the beginning. I just didn't give you the, the scripture verse, but every seed produces after its own kind. Don't let anyone tell you that you don't have right to financial harvest if you plant financial seed. Seed, according to the Bible, can include finances. So if you plant finances, you have a right to expect a financial harvest. Before there was grass, before there were fruit trees and all other forms of life, there was seed. God produced seed. Before there can be a financial harvest, there has to be the sowing of financial seed. God's the one who set this in motion. And if you and I appropriate it, we put it to work, be doers of that principle, then God will see to it that it will work in our lives. Amen. Praise God. Now, let me say this to you. I, I picked up an outline here that I haven't talked about in years and years, but I felt like that it would be important to share it with you on the broadcast today. Because some people still... Um, are, are, are wondering if they really have a right to financial prosperity. Do you really have a right to financial prosperity? Let me give you some guidelines for biblical prosperity. Number one, you must accept God's word as final authority on the subject of prosperity. You must accept God's word as final authority on the subject of prosperity. Go to the Bible and find out what God's Word says. If God's Word says you have a right to prosper, then don't listen to anybody else. For instance, 3 John verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. You go back to uh, the book of Deuteronomy, you go back to the book of Genesis, you even go back to the book of Psalms. And you will find scriptures in every one of these books, as well as many other books as well, regarding God's will for your prosperity. 
Psalm 37 says, Let them shout for joy who favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified who hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. What does that tell us? That God gets great pleasure when you and I are prospering. So, number one, you must accept God's word as final authority on the subject of prosperity. Number two, make God your source of supply. God wants to be your source. He promised in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, Paul is writing by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. What is God saying? Let me be your source of supply. Look to God for everything you need. Look to God for your harvest. If you planted seed, then you have a right to look to God to cause that seed to multiply and come back to you in the form of a harvest. Number three, realize that it is God's will for you to prosper. Don't wonder about it anymore. Don't, don't assume that it's the will of God. Know it. You need to know it. You need to know it deep down into your heart. I know this. It's not guesswork with me. Now, 47 years ago, I wasn't sure about that because I didn't know the word. It wasn't until men like Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Hagin and Oral Roberts began to show me from the word of God that God wanted me to prosper. And once I saw it in the word of God, then that settled it as far as I was concerned, that it was the will of God for me to prosper. Are you that confident today? Are you that sure? Is it something that you've settled in your heart that it's God's will for you to prosper? See, you're, you're not going to be real confident about a harvest if you're not first completely sure and confident based on the word of God that it is God's will for you to prosper. Then number four, understand that prosperity is conditional. It's not automatic. It's conditional, which leads to number five. Realize that obedience is a major key to you prospering. That's the condition. If you will obey and serve him, the Bible says in Job 36, 11, then you will spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. Obedience, obedience to God's word. If he says give, give. If he says tithe, tithe. If he says uh, be a blessing, be a blessing. Obedience is a major key to prosperity in your life. And then number six, realize the need for consistency in your giving. Don't make giving a one-time event. Be consistent. Look for opportunities to sow all the time. Number seven, know the stumbling blocks to prosperity and avoid them. The Bible says prosperity destroys a fool. What's a fool? Well, one of the definitions is somebody that thinks that he gained all this prosperity on his own might and his own ability. No, if it wasn't for God, you wouldn't be able to prosper. So avoid the stumbling blocks to prosperity. Don't become a fool. Keep sowing, keep trusting God, keep looking to God as your source. And then finally, number eight, you must understand that prosperity is progressive. It's an ongoing thing. The Lord shall increase you more and more, Psalm 115 says. Oh, praise God. I know that God wants you to prosper. I know that God wants you to have a harvest. So begin to call it in and don't give up until it manifests. I want you to watch this special announcement. Then I'll be back in just a few moments. There's a time to sow and a time to reap. Now is the time for your harvest. Harvest time has come. What's keeping you from claiming your rightful harvest? In the powerful three CD teaching, Calling in Your Harvest, Jerry Savelle explains the spiritual laws that govern the reaping of a harvest that's reserved just for you. In this series, he addresses, are you entitled to the harvest? Your part in the manifestation of your harvest. How the seeds you sow determine your destiny. How to know when your harvest is ready. What might be holding back your harvest? Can you ensure there's no end to your harvest? The most important thing to do with your harvest and more. God never forgets your offerings and the seeds you sow. Request this powerful series, Calling in Your Harvest, today. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org. Don't wait. It's time to expect extraordinary things to happen. Your harvest is ready to go to its rightful owner.
I can't stress enough how important it is that you order the resources that we're making available, particularly on this subject, calling in your harvest. You know, I mentioned earlier uh, in the teaching part of the program how that I learned these things from men like Kenneth Copeland, Oral Roberts, Kenneth Hagin. They didn't come to my house and sit down in my living room and say, Jerry, open your Bible. Let's have a Bible study. The way that I learned from them is through their books and through their tapes. We called them tapes back then because I was, uh, uh, I got a hold of this back in 1969 and we didn't have CDs back then. It was reel to reel tapes. Eventually it became cassette tapes. And now praise God, we got all this technology and you can walk around with all these sermons in your pocket. You know, it's just amazing. But that's how I began to learn it. I got their books, I got their tapes and I sat in my little bedroom with that little desk, set those tapes up, got those books out, and I fed on them every day until it became a revelation to me. That's why I want you to order this product entitled Calling in Your Harvest. It's like me coming and sitting down in your living room and teaching you if you'll just sit there and listen. Now understand, these were done in services where we had 45 minutes to an hour, maybe even longer, to expound upon these and cover a lot more material than what we were able to cover on today's broadcast. So I want to encourage you to order these right away. Don't delay, order them right now. How you can be aggressive in calling in your harvest. Three CDs, I know that they'll bless you and they'll help you gain understanding about God's principle of seed time and harvest. Also, I want to thank all of our partners for being such a blessing to us. You partners, I'm telling you, we don't know what we'd do without you. You're the reason why we're able to reach out to people all over the world with this good news of hope, this good news of faith, and this good news of victory. Thank you, partners. And those of you that have been following this ministry for quite some time, perhaps the Lord's dealing with you about becoming a partner. If you'd like information about how that can happen, how you can be a partner with Jerry Savelle Ministries International, just log on to our web website or call or write the, uh, to the information that's on your screen right now, and we'll be happy to send it to you. We believe that partners not only are givers to this ministry, but are receivers as well. Because just like Paul said to his partners in Philippi, he said, you are now partakers of my grace. The grace that is on this ministry comes on your life. So consider being a partner. Also, don't forget social media. We've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, live streaming of our church services, Heritage of Faith Christian Center. There's the Jerry Savelle Ministries mobile app. Take advantage of all these things because they're designed to help you in your spiritual growth. I'll see you again next week. Until then, remember, your faith will overcome the world.